Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Well guys, I'm gonna to put together an odds and ends video for you guys this week. Uh, as I have mentioned in some previous videos, this has been a really crazy time for me at work. Uh, two straight weeks traveling on the road all week long. Uh, home on the weekends, but have chores to do around the house and family obligations and this, that, and the other. What's resulted is, is just minimal shop time whatsoever. Uh, but we do have some things that have come in. I do have some updates on the shop itself. Uh, we have been doing a lot of work uh, this summer trying to get the wood shop in the back finished up so that we can put that space into use. And I'm finally to a point where I'm ready to kind of give you guys a tour back there and sneak peek of what we have coming. And I'm actually very proud of that. And honestly, that is where a lot of my time has been spent this summer. Instead of working on projects over here in the machine shop, we've been working on the shop itself. A lot of it has just been grunt work. It really hasn't been video worthy. I have not really been shooting a lot of video of a lot of the stuff we've been doing. Uh, but the, we have got a lot accomplished, and I want to give you guys an update on that. And I think uh, you'll be excited what you see. So first off, uh, we got a uh, couple of updates, some viewer mail that's come in and what have you, and I think I'm going to start off uh, with straight edges. Uh, so a while back, I uh, shared with you guys a project that had, did a, vi a series of videos where we I made uh, some castings for some straight edges, uh, a little camelback straight edges, some small ones to use in the shop for scraping, and it generated a lot of interest, and a lot of people were interested in acquiring uh, some castings of these. And I have been going through a process here the last couple of months. It has been kind of a slow going uh, process, but uh, bottom line, a lot of people were interested in purchasing them and been trying to find a source for a foundry to work with me. I wanted to make some uh, modifications to the patterns, uh, to the design after, you know, like with a lot of things, you, you do your first version and you get through with it and you're like, well, you know, now that I'm holding it in my hand, I want to change things a little bit. So um, anyway, I want to kind of give you an update of where we are on this. So I have my new patterns for the most part finished here. Uh, they, these still need to be sanded and painted and, and actually get, gotten totally ready for, for the foundry, but I do have them back. I've been working, this has actually been a collaborative project. I've been working with a couple of different guys. Number one, um, Charles Marlin, who has helped me out on many 3D modeling projects. He is a absolute guru when it comes to SolidWorks. And he designed, or he actually did the, the, uh, the design work in the computer anyway, for the first version of my straight edge patterns. And again, after I got them and, and made some, I'm like, well, there's some, I want to change some things up on a little bit. I'm not exactly happy with them. So we went back, we reworked some things, and this is version two. And I think this is going to be a production version of the uh, patterns to go to the foundry. And just a few little modifications, nothing too terribly crazy. One thing we did was we add these little tabs on here. A lot of these straight edges, you would have had a little block of wood that you'd put on the top so that you could set these upside down uh, where it wasn't sitting on the precision surface all the time. So we incorporated that little feature into all of them. And another little thing we did, and uh, you know, Tom Lipton has reviewed some tools and he, one of the things he says, if, you, if you're gonna go to the trouble to make something, at least put your name on it. And I agree with that. The first version, I did not have my name or anything on there. So these, uh, there's a little area in here and this is where, we're going to print out a little uh, piece that has some wording on it, that has a, a name and all that, and that's going to press in here. Um, I've got a couple of uh, prototypes of these. Uh, we, we're actually still playing around in the software with getting the draft just right on the lettering. Uh, we purposely did these as a separate piece so that we could swap them in and out without having to reprint the entire pattern. And uh, the first ones came out. We didn't have quite enough draft. Uh, on the letters, so uh, we're, I'm waiting right now to get an updated version of these uh, from the guys that I'm working with. And the guys I am working with, I mentioned Charles doing design work. I'm also working with Tim Springer. Tim's uh, up in uh, uh, Seattle area, and Tim has been helping me with the actual 3D printing. He's, uh, he's uh, actually got several 3D printers and doing some uh, uh, homemade 3D printers and some stuff, and he's been wanting to work with me on this, and it's been great to work with as well. And uh, he actually printed out uh, the items here. I was, uh, 
I was actually toying with just purchasing a 3D printer for myself, but Tim's about got me convinced to just let just work with him on it. No more printing than I'm going to do. So uh, anyway, uh, Tim, uh, greatly appreciate it. Uh, so again, these are going to be offered in three different sizes. I got a uh, a 6 inch, a 9 inch, and a 12 inch version. Uh, the 12 inch you see actually was made in two pieces because that was the print area he had on his printer. Uh, and we, there's a little dovetail key holding them together in there. And these are split patterns that will go to the foundry. So I said collaborative. So the third person that we're going to be working with on this is uh, Clark Easterling. And Clark actually uh, has a little uh, small foundry. He's got a little business. He does a lot of art foundry work. Uh, real high resolution uh, foundry work, but he's making parts and pieces as well. But he has a little small foundry over in Mississippi. Uh, it's kind of a sideline business for him, but he's uh, doing a good bit of foundry work now on the side. And Clark is willing to work with me on actually doing the foundry work. Uh, I have sent him my original patterns and we've gone back and forth. Uh, on those. He actually made a test cast of that one and he's waiting right now to get these patterns from me so that he can do a test cast on these and then once he's kind of uh, got his, uh, get, tested things out and make sure everything's going to work all right, he's going to give me a price on these and then once I get a price from him we can come up with a price that we're going to charge for him and uh, we'll offer these up for sale. So as of right now, I do not have uh, a price on these yet, guys. Uh, we're working on it very quickly. Hopefully, we'll have that before too much longer. We're getting uh, very close to having these ready to go to the foundry. So anyway, I wanted to give you guys a quick update on this pat on this project because I have been getting some emails. I know a while back I started creating a list of people who were interested in these items, and uh, we once we get a the castings done and get a price on these, I will show you what they're going to look like. And uh, we'll, like I said, come up with prices, and I'll probably set up a little store online where you can just order them from. And uh, I think Clark's going to be real good to work with on this. We're actually talking about, you know, originally I said I was just going to do a one-time order on these. Uh, Clark is uh, actually willing to uh, keep the patterns, and uh, he's actually probably going to make an aluminum pattern. We actually did a double shrink on these, so he's going to take the, 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 the uh, 3D printed patterns make an aluminum match plate uh, so that he can real quickly go out there and ram these things up and, and do them. But uh, because he's a small foundry and he's doing stuff, uh, you know, pretty much every single week, he said that if I, if I wanted to, that I could uh, uh, potentially have these where if you get an order, we'll just send him the order. He'll go ahead and, and cast a couple of them at a time once we get past that initial order. So maybe that's going to work out as well. But anyway, quick update on this. Uh, excited to be moving forward on the, the straight edge project and hopefully going to have some castings that we can uh, make available to folks soon. And uh, this is successful. Who knows? We may uh, start offering some other castings for people to do some uh, projects with on their own. Uh, I've got some ideas of some other things that we might do down the road and kind of excited about the opportunity. So anyway, update on that. In the viewer mail department, I have a really nice item that showed up in the mail a week or so ago uh, that I'll share with you guys. And this is a toe jack uh, that a viewer sent to me. And I wish that I could give credit for who the viewer was, but I have no idea who it was. This is kind of an interesting item. Uh, it just kind of showed up. I didn't receive any emails. I didn't receive uh, anything. And it was uh, drop shipped directly from the company that, uh, that they bought it from. Uh, I wasn't expecting it. I was like, what in the world is in this big heavy box out here? And uh, went out there and opened it up and there's a toe jack inside. And this is a really nice uh, toe jack um, made by Hydra 4. It's a 10 ton uh, toe jack, which is a real nice capacity. It's a nice size unit. And it's, uh, it's, kind of, uh, it's kind of interesting. This thing showed up right as I was getting ready to move some machines around the shop, doing some rearranging. And we're going to show some of my rearranging and shop uh, update here in a minute. But this thing showed up, and, and we put it right to work, uh, picking up some machines so that we could get some skates up underneath them and move things around. Um, nice heavy-duty capacity. This thing is, is really sweet. You can either lift off of this uh, little toe down here up underneath the bottom, so you can kind of slide this up underneath something, jack it up, or you can lift directly off of the top uh, either way. 
And anyway, like I said, it has already been used three or four times in the short time that it's been here. So I don't know who sent this in, but whoever it was, thank you very much. This was actually something I've had on my list uh, of, of a, of, for a purchase, a future purchase. I wanted to get one for the shop, and uh, it just hasn't, hadn't made it to the top of the list yet. But now that it's in here, it pro I probably should have bought one a long time ago. This thing is really handy. So anyway, thank you very much to whoever uh, sent that in and contributed it to the shop. So another nice addition to the shop uh, showed up a week or so ago, and this is this nice little uh, display with a bunch of stock of grinding wheels that Osborne uh, sent in. And uh, this is another one that I'm really excited about. Uh, Osborne, if you're not familiar with these guys, these guys, of course, make the uh, all kinds of gr grinding and abrasive disc. Uh, they, they actually have a full catalog full of a lot of different items, but uh, real high quality stuff. I've heard a lot of really good things about these guys over the years and actually have had some several viewers telling me I need to try out their products uh, just because they're good. Well, the company actually contacted me and I think they reached out to a couple of the other YouTube guys. They kind of got hooked up with us through the Bar Z Bash this past year. They were sent a bunch of stuff over to the Bar Z Bash for uh, door prizes. Uh, but anyway, I got an uh, email from them wanting to know if they could send me some, some products to try out. And uh, <laughs> this is what they sent. This is awesome. So uh, they, this is actually a wall display like you'd see in a hardware store or something like that. Uh, but they sent this thing to me and they also sent, you know, a pretty nice stock and selection of uh, grinding wheels, cutoff wheels. There's grinding wheels, there's flap wheels on here. Uh, several different sizes, grits, uh, variations. It got both the kind that go directly on, on the arbor or on the arbor here like the screw on or the ones that you uh, tighten up either way and have them for both the uh, four and a half inch and these of course fit like a seven inch grinder. I got some seven inches here and some six inches here that will also fit a seven inch grinder. So uh, this was again awesome. Uh, it's kind of, you know, these are consumables. These are things you, if you use a lot of in the shop, particularly if you're doing any fabrication work. But hey, I use this stuff all the time for all kinds of things. And uh, usually I'm going and buying them, you know, one or two at a time. And it seems like I never have the one I need. Uh, I'll get back here in the shop, start a project, and, and all of a sudden I realize, oh, shoot, I'm out of a out of grinding disc again. Have to run to town and go buy some. So. Uh, really excited to try these things out and uh, give them a good good review because again I have heard really good things these things from what people tell me this Osborne brand uh, will really outlast a, a lot of the uh, cheaper stuff that you quite honestly see in a lot of the a lot of the hardware stores and stuff now it's getting hard to find good quality stuff uh, everybody's just going for the cheapest stuff they can come up with and sometimes cheap isn't the cheapest uh, particularly if something's going to last a lot longer uh, like a, a grinding disc or so forth uh, will. So I uh, got this set up in the shop over here now. Um, I got my grinders kind of right next to them over here. So when I need one, I can go grab one off the wall here and uh, hopefully this will last me for quite a while. So in addition to the grinding disc over there, Osborne also sent along some other goodies to me. Like I said, they make a lot more than just grinding disc. Uh, uh, and one of the things that they're really well known for are these uh, these wire wheels, uh, twisted knot type wheels, or whatever you want to call them. They call theirs the tough brush. And again, I have been wanting to try some of these out because again, I've heard so much about them. Uh, these things are supposed to really last a long time. They're supposed to be very aggressive and really do a good job. And I use a lot of these. I go through a whole lot of them when I'm cleaning up machines, uh, stripping paint off and things like that. You know, I've tried all kinds of different ways to clean up, particularly like cast iron machines and stuff with different solvents, different uh, uh, strip paint strippers, etc. And it seems like I keep going back to the good old wire wheel. Uh, it just, it works. It's, it's yes, yeah, it's a little bit more, it, it takes a good bit of work, but in the long run, it, to me, it's the fastest, quickest, most effective way of doing it. So I'm really excited about trying some of these out. Uh, they sent along a couple of different styles of the flat type and then also a couple of cup wheels here. Um, got a little small cup wheels here. So anyway, again, excited to try those out. Uh, they also sent along a couple of their uh, wire hand brushes here. These are steel. These are stainless steel. So you'd like to use these for cleaning up aluminum or something when you're TIG welding. And a big 7-inch uh, uh, flap disc. 
uh, which I've got a seven inch grinder, so they send along one of those to try out. So anyway, some nice stuff here from Osborne, and um, again, I'm just I'm ready to ready to put it to work and see how it works. They send along a catalog here, and just to kind of give you an idea of the variety of stuff these guys offer, of course, um, you know we talked about their 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 wire, wire brushes that they have. Uh, these have just recently, like I said, been re-engineered and they've got a whole bunch of different wire wheels. Uh, they also have the ones that go like on a regular grinder, uh, like a, a, a bench grinder. Uh, so lots of options here, lots of different variations of that. I'm going to probably, I need to update the ones on my grinder. I'm going to probably be ordering me some new wire wheels to go on my grinder because the one I've got over there is getting uh, on its last leg. There's some brass and some buffing wheels, all kinds of accessories there. Power brushes, uh, they sent along a couple of their tough brush versions of those for me to try out, so I'm, we'll give those a try at some point next time I'm cleaning something up. These guys make a lot of brushes uh, for industrial uses, so you know, here's some brushes for cleaning out tubes and so forth. Um, let's see what else we got in here. These are some of their more industrial type brushes. Uh, I, I was told that you know these are for industry, obviously cleaning up parts and deburring and so forth. But uh, they make a lot of stuff for industrial uses. I hear that they make the brushes that like go on street sweepers and things like that. Of course, here's uh, some of your uh, abrasives, uh, like what we they send along for the the grinders. Yeah, there we go. There's a whole bunch of different options here. Flap wheels. They even make brooms. <laughs> uh, you name it, these guys are, are doing it. So uh, I see. I even think I saw back here there was the the wire brushes, even paint brushes. So uh, these guys make a lot of different, a wide variety of stuff. And uh, when I asked them about where you can get stuff, they said uh, go online. Well, they said number one, a lot of your uh, uh, industrial supply places are, are carrying them, or at least can order the stuff. Uh, I, I know they mentioned Fastenal. I'm, I'm sure some of the other ones. That's just one that I remembered that, that when I had an email from them. And a lot of the stuff they said you can also get off of Amazon. They are in the process of uh, getting their website up where they can take orders directly. Right now, you just you have to get them through a distributor, but hopefully very soon uh, you can order them directly from Osborne. Uh, but they said if you want to order online right now, probably the best thing to do is go to Amazon. Uh, they've got a pretty good selection of items on Amazon. Uh, that you can order, order their, their stuff through there. Now it's time for a good shop update, and I'm actually getting really excited about what we're accomplishing back here in the wood shop. So if you follow my channel a lot, you'll know when we built the shop, I kind of have it divided into two areas. One of them is for metalworking, and one is uh, going to be designated for woodworking. And we pretty much got the metalworking in the shop done first. And the back end of the shop's just kind of been, it's, it seems like it's just been dragging on and dragging on and dragging on. Back during the winter, we made a big effort to get our ceiling put in back here. We got all that finished up past spring. And uh, since then, been working on actually getting everything else. We had this area insulated, but basically just still had the stud walls in here and uh, been trying to get it all finished up. Fortunately for me, uh, Miles McDonald, who is a college student, I've mentioned many times before, who helps me out a lot. He's been home for the summer, and I've been keeping him pretty busy uh, as he's had time to come out here and work for me. Uh, he's been helping doing a lot of this stuff on his own, or and when I'm in town, and, and again, I've been on the road a lot. So uh, when I'm in town, usually I'm back here, I've been focused on helping him and, and working on stuff that he needs, uh, you know, two people. So this has been kind of a group effort. Both of us have been working on it a lot. Miles has quite honestly done a lot of the the grunt work that he can do by himself, and then uh, we've worked together on a lot of it as well. But anyway, got our uh, paneling up, or you know, the, the beadboard up on the walls around through here, and just like we did in the machine shop side, we put this wainscoting uh, on here. So the bottom is actually some uh, tin, uh, like tin roofing, uh, that I put down the bottom and have the little chair rail going around. And uh, I like the way it looks, number one, and it gives me a little bit more protection on these walls down lower where things are bumping into them and what have you. And quite honestly, another reason that I did it is, is that the, I was using eight foot long uh, sheets of this beadboard and I got 10 foot ceilings back here. So I was gonna have to have a joint and I just, putting this on here, uh, I was able to make the joint actually behind 
the, the wainscoting so you don't have that, that ugly joint to look at. That was another reason why I did that. So anyway, we got most of this done. I've still got a little bit more to do. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a second. Uh, additionally, uh, we've been doing a lot of work with electrical. And this is uh, just time consuming stuff. So when I put in the shop all my single phase, my outlets and stuff, of course, we just wired into the wall. But uh, you know, we've also got three phase circuits in here. I've got that nice big American rotary phase converter that we use for the shop. Uh, it's got a 40 horsepower capacity. And because I have so many three phase machines, I, I wanted to kind of get it set up where I could just plug in something wherever I wanted to. So we've got that phase converter outside going into a three phase panel. Uh, then the panel is feeding out circuits into the shop. And just like we did on the regular electric, I put a sub panel uh, on this side of the shop. I got my main panel on the other side. Because of the high ceiling is in here, it's difficult to run wires from one side of the shop to the other. So instead of doing that, I just ran one circuit to a sub panel over here. This sub panel feeds uh, this side of the shop and the other sub panel feeds, or the other main panel feeds uh, the, the, the uh, north side of the shop over there. And that has worked out real well. Did the same thing on the single phase. Like I have a main panel and a sub panel that feeds both ends of the shop. And quite honestly, because of the length of the wire runs, uh, it was cheaper for me to put in, you know, one heavier wire going to the sub panel than, you know, 20 or 30 smaller circuits running that smaller wire longer distances. Uh, so it was also for somewhat of a cost savings. Um, got. Again, three phase coming in here and, and using conduit, I decided to, to go conduit on the surface rather than going in wall. It just gives me more flexibility if I need to reconfigure anything in the future for machine placement or whatever. Uh, you know, I've got some flexibility with this conduit. With stuff that's in the wall, once it's in the wall, it's really hard to move it around. Uh, but we got all of our conduit ran, got our circuits, and you can see I've got uh, boxes in here about every five or six feet going around the perimeter of the shop. Uh, also have some uh, on the center post. I don't know if you can see it right here, but on the center post we got some circuits there as well. And uh, these are all pretty much 20 amp uh, three phase circuits, uh, which will run a pretty good sized motor and will run most everything I've got. In fact, I've only got one uh, larger motor right now and it's got its own dedicated circuit. It's got I think a 30 amp on that one. Uh, but everything else is 20 amps. Most of these I have uh, two outlets on, on one, one breaker in here. Because I am a one man shop, I'm typically not running multiple machines. So uh, I did decide to put two circuits per outlet uh, just to kind of give me some, some more flexibility, not having to run quite as many, having to have quite as many uh, breakers in the box. Uh, but even at, at 20 amps on here with most of the machines, I could probably run two on one circuit anyway without uh, tripping anything just because of the amount of power that things are drawing. Uh, but I'm really excited to have some of this done. I'm starting to get things a little bit set up in here. You see I got my, my um, whiteboard up on here, got my clamp rack all mounted over there. This again is going to primarily be woodworking. The area that I'm standing in now is going to kind of be my bench area. I've got my Workbench that I built probably almost 20 years ago now sitting here and uh, on the over on this side just some temporary benches. I'm actually going to build a new bench to go over here uh, at some point in time. We need to get some toolboxes in here for my hand tools, uh, woodworking tools. And uh, right now I don't have most, I got a couple pieces of woodworking machinery in here, stuff that I've needed along and along, but most of my stuff is still in storage and we're going to have to have a big moving day uh, down the road to get everything in here and set up. As far as what's left to do in here, I've still got my high work to do. And as far as putting the, the paneling up on the, on the walls, uh, trim work, uh, and a little bit of electric. I got some ceiling fans I'm going to mount in here as well. And I've been holding off on that, uh, mainly because I, what I think I'm going to do instead of trying to do it off the of scaffolding is I'm going to rent a scissor lift uh, for a weekend. And that way we can move, get up underneath these beams and just have uh, you know, one scissor lift that we can move around. But what's been really holding me back on getting that done is, is I've, all this, the stuff you see in here has all been kind of just piled up in the, in the center shop area where I could work around it. And I've been needing to get the center bay opened up where I can get in here with that scissor lift. And we are to that point now. So 
probably here in the next weekend or so, uh, we're going to get that scissor lift rented and uh, try to finish up everything else. I've already got my plywood over here. It's all been um, stained and uh, sealed and it's pretty much just ready to cut and go up. So uh, all that's done. I got my, my trim boards. Uh, I got everything stained on those. They just need to be cut and again put up. So uh, probably have a good uh, work weekend there uh, and get that knocked out here uh, pretty quick. And once that's done, I think this area is going to be finished uh, and we're going to be ready to start moving. And again, I'm going to have to have a moving day, probably bring the forklift out here for the day so that I can move machines. Uh, I've got actually a pretty nice collection of woodworking machinery that's been in storage now for six or seven years. Uh, as I moved out of my old shop, we bought this new house, built the shop. It's just, it's just been a long process. So I'm really excited uh, to hopefully be getting all this stuff back where I can use it again. Over here on the north side of the shop, uh, this little area here is going to be kind of dedicated to wood turning. I got one of my wood lathes in here already. I've got another wood lathe that's going to come in here, a big pattern maker's lathe uh, that's going to come sit probably right in this general area. Uh, but I want to kind of have an area dedicated to my wood turning. Um, of course, I got the Monarch 10 E sitting back here right now, just kind of in storage. That's not going to stay here. It's just kind of sitting here for right now. Uh, I moved some of the shelving from the wood shop side and, and moved it over here. Uh, and I'm going to give you an update on the metal shop here in just a minute because we've done some rearranging some stuff in there. But uh, those shelves are in here. That back wall back there, uh, I'm planning on fabricating a lumber rack to go up there to hold lumber. Uh, right now, i got some stuff piled up on the floor, but I want to get that nice and organized. Uh, so guys, one thing I want to take just a minute here to do, and, and I almost feel guilty every time I do this, but I, I really feel like that while I'm showing you guys the improvements and the, the things that we're getting done over here on the, on the woodworking side of the shop, uh, I need to take a moment and I need to thank all the guys that specifically contribute toward uh, VintageMachinery.org every month through Patreon. So Patreon is a way where uh, viewers can support financially uh, different uh, YouTube creators or what have you that's out there. Uh, I participate in this, uh, many of the YouTube creators do as well. Uh, but when you, the, the funds that I get off of Patreon really gets reinvested back into the shop. That's kind of what I've designated that money to be used for, is I take that money and we put it back into the shop. And over the last uh, nine months to a year, however long it's been, I've been saving up that money and that's what's been financing uh, the buying the materials and stuff to be able to get this side of the shop up and going. So anyway, thank you to all those Patreon supporters out there. There's a pretty good long list of you guys. And uh, I, I, again, I don't thank you near enough, but it's really, really helpful to me to have that extra income coming in that we can then turn around and invest back in the shop, uh, which is then going to hopefully be able to give me more opportunities, create more content, and get things out there to you. So Patreon is completely optional. Uh, you know, if, if you don't want to, if you don't have the means to, uh, by no means, I don't expect it from anybody. Uh, but uh, many people have contacted. I was very, uh, not really wanting to do this at first, but I was getting, you know, messages from folks you know, they wanted to do this. And if that's something you do want to do, there is a link to Patreon in the description down below. There's a link up on the homepage that you can click on. They'll take you to there. And basically, you can just go, uh, pledge a certain amount of money each month. Many guys are just doing $1 a month. And while $1 may not sound like a lot, when a bunch of people put it together, it does add up. Uh, we do have a few little bonuses on there. If you do $5 a month, we send you a little vintage machinery decal. And $25 a month, we send you one of the vintage machinery embroidered aprons like I have on right now. Uh, but guys, you know, if you want to do it, I'm not telling, asking you to do it at any particular level. Like I said, just a dollar a month really helps. And if you're not where you can do that, and if it's not something you want to do, it's not a problem. Uh, not a problem at all. But Patreon does help support uh, the site. It does help support the channel. And it does help get things done around here. And thank you very much to everybody that contributes to that. So in addition to working on the wood shop side, we've also been doing some updates over here on the metal work in the machine shop side. And primarily electrical work again. So the, the circuits that I showed you in there have been extended into this side of the shop. I don't know if you can really see them, but we have again circuits going around the edge of the wall here, uh, as well as some power here on the center post in the middle. Big, huge improvement for me because uh, ever since 
we've got the machines in here running and had my phase converter hooked up. Even though I had a panel on the north side and had some permanent circuits ran over there, everything on this side has been ran off of a big long extension cord. So I've had to take an extension cord run from over there by the main panel, run in here and you know plug an individual machine up one at a time. I now have three phase power and I got outlets on the wall where we can just keep these machines plugged in all the time. Uh, turn the phase converter on and we got three phase. Real excited about that. Also did a little bit of rearranging. If you remember, uh, the, the LeBlonde used to be on the wall back here and the, the green Monarch that we're working on restoring was here. I flip flopped those two machines um, mainly because I got more room on that big wall. This uh, Monarch is a little bit longer lathe and uh, I think it just fits on that wall a little bit better than this LeBlonde did. It gives me a little bit more room here to move around the shop. And uh, the LeBlanc lathe, uh, while this has been my main primary metalworking lathe, and really it's the only lathe I got running in the shop at the moment, once I get the 16 inch Monarch going, this lathe is probably gonna find a new home. And my plan is, is my 10 double E lathe that I've still got to restore it's gonna come in here and sit here. And again, that should give me more, it should open this area up even more because that's a much smaller lathe. Uh, but got it set back up here. Uh, I've still gotta get this thing leveled up so that I can get in here and do it. I've actually got a, a project or two I need to do on this lathe, so that's gonna to have to get done pretty quickly. Uh, but anyway, this machine is sitting here for now. Uh, but big news is, is we got power on everything. As far as the Monarch goes, yes, guys, I know that project has been kind of sitting on idle. Uh, this is about to become my main focus. I've got to get this machine finished and uh, up and running and I actually have been doing a few little small odds and ends on it over the last week or two. As I've had a, a minute here and a minute there, uh, but we're going to hopefully get that thing up and going here soon and uh, because really just I just need to get it done. Number one, I need the capacity uh, and it should be a really nice machine when it's done. Also want to give a quick update on the big 28 inch Monarch. Uh, this job has more or less just been kind of sitting in here. We have got it mostly cleaned up and at least partially painted, mostly painted. Still got to paint the, the carriage and saddle and all that. Uh, but it's been cleaned up, it's pretty much ready to go here. Uh, once I got my power in here, I've got a 30 amp circuit kind of dropped from the ceiling back here that I can plug into. Uh, so I'm hopefully gonna have this thing under power very soon. Actually, we I plugged it in the other day and I've got some issues going on in the electrical cabinet uh, that I just got to get some time to get in there and troubleshoot. Um, I know that this machine was running before I got it so uh, I'm not sure exactly what's going on and I'm not the best when it comes to uh, troubleshooting motor control so I've contacted a friend of mine who is a pretty good industrial electrician and he's going to come out and help me go through that and figure that out hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but this machine is actually hopefully not too far from being able where we can uh, at least power it up and, and maybe use it on a job or two. Uh, and while the 16 inch Monarch is my number one priority, this one is kind of next on the list. I really want to have this big lathe for capacity. And I've got some really, really awesome news about this machine. Again, if you follow the channel, you'll know that when I purchased this lathe, uh, I purchased it knowing good and, well, good and well that it did not have a tailstock and that was a major problem. And I had some plans, actually the, the previous owner who had passed away had acquired a couple of tailstocks and he was gonna uh, uh, modify one to fit this machine and that was kind of my game plan. It was gonna be a big project, uh, but good news is, is I have found a tailstock uh, for this lathe. Uh, one of my YouTube viewers who had seen my, my, my video on this and remember that I didn't have a tailstock, he actually had a big 28-inch uh, Monarch. It was the model before this one, uh, and I think this is a 610, maybe his, I can't remember the model numbers off the top of my head, but he had the model that was before this, and while the headstock in this end was completely different, from the bed down, is identical to this machine. And uh, he had a big one, it had some issues, uh, and he decided, he tried to sell it, couldn't find a buyer, and he decided he needed to get it out of the shop. He decided he was gonna scrap it, which you always hate to hear about a machine getting scrapped, but in this case, uh, it's gonna be good for me because I was able to rescue 
uh, the, the tailstock off of it, as well as a few other parts and pieces. There were a few little things that I said, hey, save this, save that. Uh, I've got some knobs and hand wheels that weren't just right on this one, and uh, he pulled off several parts for me that hopefully we can put right on this machine. So tailstock, uh, it is uh, actually sitting up in Michigan right now, up in the central part of Michigan, and uh, I've got to get it down to me. He's got it on a, on a little skid ready to go. Uh, I'm hoping that I can work it out. Arnfest is coming up, which is a big thing I go to Chicago every year for in September. And uh, I'm hoping I can get it picked up when I go up there. So I'll either drive up to uh, Michigan and pick it up myself, or uh, maybe, hopefully, somebody from the Michigan area is going to be heading over to Chicago, either for Arnfest or sometime in before then, and can maybe haul it over for me. Uh, anyway, we've got to work out logistics on that. But either way, come September when I go to Arnfest, I hope to be bringing back the tailstock and a few other parts. Another nice piece that he had uh, for his was a uh, steady rest. So the, the part that goes in here that you can put a piece in or what have you. He had the original one for his. Unfortunately, it's got some issues. It's actually broken, uh, but all the pieces are there, and I think I can put it back together and uh, get, make it where we can use that as well. Uh, but anyway, we, we worked, worked out a deal. So all I got to do now is get it from Michigan to South Georgia, and uh, hopefully come September, uh, when I make a trip up to Chicago, we can work out the details and get that picked up. But real exciting news uh, for the big 28-inch Monarch. Well, there you go, guys. That's going to be a wrap on this uh, edition of Odds and Ends, and hopefully uh, you enjoyed that. Again, not a whole lot of project stuff going on this week, but got a lot of neat things happening in the shop, to the shop itself, new additions to the shop, uh, just uh, news and updates, etc. cetera. Uh, but we are moving along in the big Rucker shop over here for VintageMachinery.org. Things are happening, and we're getting a lot of things done. Uh, it's just not a lot of project-oriented things uh, to do, but uh, exciting news nonetheless. So thanks for watching. As always, uh, leave me some comments if you like. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, and uh, we'll see you next time around.